Welcome back to Newswatch 10. I'm Jeremy Damon and we're talking sports. After an 11 point loss to Hillgrove on Wednesday, Murray County had a chance to redeem themselves Saturday in the boys' consolation game. A win and the Indians clinch the three seed. Plenty of Indians fans on site for this one out in Woodland. And we'll pick it up with 420 to go in the second quarter. Indians up one, but Cass's Ian Clay's going to change that with this three ball. Makes the 21-19 Cass lead. Indians, they come back though later in the second quarter. Indians' John Kaiser takes it all by himself. He'd finish with 16, 30, 22, Murray County. 28 seconds to go in the second. Colonels tears Batiste the drive and one, 46-41 Indians. Third quarter, now Colonels starting to heat up. Batiste with an acrobatic move in the lane. 41-37 Cass, but Murray County, they respond. Kaiser going to launch this one from downtown, 44-37 Indians. Now with 34 seconds to go in the third, it's Chase Sanford. The drive and the bucket, 46-39 Indians, and Murray County, they go on to win 68-60. They'll play a Rockdale County on Saturday. Those guys, uh, you know, they've been through the fire before, and, and I felt like, you know, playing some close games early on this season really helped us in this game, and uh, we didn't panic when we got down, and we didn't uh, panic when they, actually, when they got up on us, and we held our composure, and we went right down and scored, and, you know, that's a, that's a, test, a testament to our guys and their mentality. That was big. I mean, we, we lost one yesterday, and we felt like we're the number two seed in this, uh, in this region, so we want to come out and prove it tonight. We just try to keep pushing, try to be physical, try to take the drag. So it gives us confidence going into the state tournament and that puts us at a three seed. Also playing in Woodland this weekend was Northwest. The Lady Bruins, who have been stellar all season, look to capture their second region tournament title in four years. And this one, trust me, had a lot to dance about. Just ask this little guy. We'll pick it up 202 to go in the first. Callie Thomas, the drive, 6 5 Lady Bruins. Northwest up three now, but Ashley Allen's three is going to tie things up at 18 apiece, or I'm sorry, eight apiece, but the Lady Bruins respond. Second quarter now, Jordy Cook delivers one of her four three-pointers on the night, 11-8 Northwest, and then it was all Northwest. Jordy Cook again from beyond the arc, 16-12 Lady Bruins. More from the blue and orange, more from Callie Thomas. The left-handed teardrop Makes it a 2015 Northwest lead. Third quarter now, more Callie Thomas. She led the way with 13 points and five assists. 31-20 Northwest. Now with 2.52 to go in the third, Jordy Cook, this three ball makes it an 18 point Northwest lead. They were in cruise control. In the fourth quarter, more from the Lady Bruins. The give and go, Christy Robinson to Quinesha McCurty. She finished with 10 points. Northwest, they win 55-37 and they'll play Friday against Loganville. Well, that's what makes this team so unique is because they're going to get focused and they're going to stay focused and they're going to do whatever they got to do, whether the team slows it down or whether the team presses us all the time. They're going to do what they're supposed to do and, and do it well. I knew at that when that buzzer went off that we uh, had accomplished what we had worked for all year and now we're just looking for the next step. But this is the way we love to play. We love to push the ball and run. So, I mean, it felt good to play how we play again. <laughs> We knew that Osborne, we knew they were going to take us, like they were going to run a lot, so we were already ready for that, and we were, we practiced on it in practice, and we just got ready for it, and I think we did good. Back home in Tunnel Hill on Friday night, the Northwest Soccer Girls were out on a pitch for a meeting with Heritage a team that gave them far more than they might have expected. And it was a pretty cold one out there. And we'll pick it up. This was a good one also. Second half, Heritage trails 2-1 until Emily Robney goes left corner pocket to make it a 2-2 game. It would remain tied and will go straight to the shootout. Lady Generals up first and Jennifer Hall. She drills this one. 1-0 one Heritage. Now it's Jesse Romero. She equalizes it and another Burton stop would be all the doctor ordered. Next set, Rachel Sims makes it a 2-0 Heritage game. Another miss for the Bruins. Lauren Gotch can put it away for the Generals, but hits the far post. Now 3-1, Betsy Alvarez has to make this to keep Northwest alive, and she does. 3-2 Heritage. To the fifth set, a goal, and it's over. Stephanie Shipley, she nails it home. Heritage takes the shootout 4-2 and wins in overtime 3-2 over the Bruins. 
Well, would you believe it's already baseball season? At least here in Northwest Georgia, that is. And coming off a 16 and 14 season, the Dalton Catamounts look to get things started on the right foot Friday in a scrimmage at Calhoun. Well, it's not exactly baseball weather, but you know what? It's all, it's pretty much all good in, in Calhoun. Calhoun already up one nothing in the bottom of the second off Dalton's John Irwin. Jordan Poulsen's an RBI base hit into center. Daniel MacArthur scores and it's 2-0 Yellow Jackets. Still in the second, Zach Bradley's deep fly ball left scores. Kelly Holbrook and the top, and this tag makes it a 3-0 Calhoun game. And games are usually dictated by starting pitching. Well, no difference in this one. Calhoun's Austin Norrell, he was feeling it. Calhoun, they were feeling it. They go on to win this one 3-1. How about that, Melissa? Baseball season we're talking about. So we Already? are ready. It's so cold. It is cold. Yeah, but you know what? It's only going to get warmer, and especially here in the south. I think we won't be too long before we're you know, all in shorts and flip flops and bathing yeah. suits. Well, yeah. maybe, but I don't know about the next few days. Cedric Haynes says it's going to be pretty cold. He joins us from the Weather Center for a final look at weather. Cedric, what do you got? All right, guys, what well, it is, it's going to be pretty cold out there for us. So if you're taking a look here at our radar and satellite picture, we're looking at another cold night tonight, but that's because we're going to be looking at clear skies. We